Welcome to another video. If you want to have early access to these videos, be a part of the decision making process, or just support this channel, check out my Patreon, Dr. Leo Venus. The link is in the description box below. Now, today we are going to be talking about one of the most talked about nutrients in the field of nutrition science, which is calcium. Now, the thing about calcium that makes it very interesting is it's actually the most common mineral in the human body. It makes up about one to 2% of our body weight, but 99% of it is actually stored in tissues such as bone and our teeth, whereas only 1% of it is actually circulating around the blood. Calcium is important for bone health. I think that is drilled into everyone from an early age, seeing all the milk commercials, milk makes strong bones, right? But Milk is not the only source of calcium. This is a very important thing to remember. It's actually probably one of the poorest sources of calcium in terms of a health product. But there are also other areas where calcium have an impact in our body, such as nerve and muscle function, as well as maintaining acid-base balance in our bloodstreams. When it comes to deficiency in calcium, what you will have heard about for sure is osteoporosis. And the name comes from porous bones. It means that your bones are lacking in mineral. They're very porous essentially there are holes in them and that means they're very weak very easy to break so the way you're going to see this the most often is either in people who have abnormal fractures where they should not have broken a bone but they broke them because they're extremely weak or you're going to see them in screening tests this is most commonly done with elderly ladies because they are at the highest risk for osteoporosis and the way to check for this there is no blood test to check for osteoporosis the way you check for it is a DEXA scan where you look for the thickness, the mineral density of your bones. The main risk factor, like I said, is elderly women. And the, the thing that is going to get you there is a low intake of calcium over time, as well as a low vitamin D level, because vitamin D is essential. It is vital for you to actually absorb the calcium from the food in your gut into your bloodstream. Without vitamin D, the calcium doesn't get in. So it's important to have both of these in the right place. Now earlier I mentioned that you have no blood test for osteoporosis. Osteoporosis is where you're going to see most of the time, however your actual blood levels of calcium are going to remain pretty stable even if you're not getting enough calcium. That is because the body actually takes calcium from your bone and from your calcium stores in the body and puts it into the bloodstream so that we can maintain homeostasis throughout life. And this is why your blood calcium level is a very poor marker for a calcium deficiency. However, over a long time, a severe calcium deficiency can actually even start causing a variation in your calcium levels in your blood and causing a so-called hypocalcemia, which just means low blood calcium. And the symptoms that you're gonna get with that, this is actually a very dangerous condition, this is life-threatening. And you can have abnormal nerve function, you can have cramping in your muscles, you can have seizures, and you can have ar arrhythmias, which just means an abnormal heart rhythm that can also be very, very dangerous. Now, as we talked about for osteoporosis, which is the main issue most people have where the low intake of calcium and vitamin D are the main risk factors. When it comes to having actually low levels of calcium in the blood, the main conditions that can actually lead to this are, for example, hypoparathyroidism. The parathyroid glands are these tiny little glands out of your thyroid, you have four of them, and sometimes they go crazy and they cause all sorts of problems and sometimes they have to be operated out. Another thing that can cause it is infection, pancreatitis. In severe pancreatitis, sometimes you can actually get something called saponification, where you get precipitation of the calcium around your pancreas and you get this really nasty necrotic picture. Another classical thing you can do is chronic renal failure. This is because your kidneys are vital in the calcium metabolism in your body. So when your kidneys are diseased, you can actually get uh, a low calcium level in your blood, both through vitamin D and parathyroid hormone as well. Last but not least, you have absorption abnormalities, which are any sort of intestinal or a GI tract gut problem, such as Crohn's or uh, celiacs or these types of, you know, lactose intolerance can cause it. All these things that cause you not to absorb the calcium in the first place can lead to a very severe rapid hypocalcemia or low calcium. So for the solution then, what do we do to avoid this? Like I said, the main problem for most people is gonna be osteoporosis and it's gonna be asymptomatic. You're not going to know you have it unless you get checked. And it's not going to be the blood calcium unless it's very severe, it's going to be weak and fragile bones. And to avoid this, you need to increase your intake of calcium. This is either through foods or through supplementation. And very importantly, you also have to increase your vitamin D levels. Without the high vitamin D levels, you will not absorb the calcium. 
So this is why it's important to get adequate sun exposure to your bare skin. One of the main misconceptions people have is that you get vitamin D from food. You can get a little bit of vitamin D from food, but even if you eat as much vitamin D from food naturally as you can, that will only amount to about 10% of your vitamin D intake. So most of it is supposed to come from exposure to sunlight. So be sure to make sure you're getting some sun exposure to bare skin, or if not, take a vitamin D supplement. It is very important. One more thing I forgot to say here is that since we're talking about low calcium, these are the main solutions. But since the main issue most people run into is osteoporosis, another very important intervention or thing you can do to avoid this is actually resistance training. And this is because when you stress your bones, the osteoblasts or the cells in your bones that create the mineral or create the bone are actually stimulated to produce more of it. And this is why weightlifting is very, very important for anyone who wants to strengthen their bones and have healthy bones as they age. Well, the last thing for this video that I have included is a list of some of the best sources of calcium from healthy foods that you can get. Like I said, I do not include milk here because even though milk is high in calcium, it is actually not a good health food. It has a lot of adverse effects on human health. And humans are not baby calves, so try to avoid a lot of milk products. I'll just zoom in to this picture here and you can see both the type of food, the serving size, and the percent of the DRI or the daily recommended intake. The last thing I'm going to say about these foods is that not all of these foods have the same bioavailability. In other words, not all the calcium is gonna be absorbed at the same rate into the blood. For example, spinach only has a absorption rate of about 5%. So only 5% of the calcium in spinach actually gets absorbed by your body, whereas kale, has a 50% bioavailability. So this is why it is very important that you eat a variety of these foods and that you don't just depend on one food for your calcium intake. So that is it for this video. In summary, calcium very important for bone health, nerve, muscle function, and maintaining acid-base balance. The main issue is gonna be osteoporosis, which comes with a low intake of both calcium and vitamin D. And the way to solve this is, like I said, increasing your intake of calcium. You have a list of foods there. Increasing your levels of vitamin D, either through sun exposure or supplementation. And last but not least, to avoid osteoporosis, you also want to be doing that resistance training, working out your muscles, but also stimulating your bones to strengthen over time. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. And if you're interested in having more information like this, on different sorts of nutrients that I deem very important for health. So not only calcium, but all sorts of other things, as well as other lifestyle factors. You can actually send me an email and I'll make sure they have the chance to get my ebook. With that, I say thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.